This is the review of all the lectures and series. We're going to talk about the step-by-step -step strategy to test the series for the convergence. In general, we write down the infinite series in this form, which can be expanded by substituting the n, the values of the n, to the general term of the series from 1 until the infinity. So basically, it is expanded in the form of a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus n to the 1 until the infinity. So where we can estimate the sum, and if this is the finite number, we say that this series is convergent. And when we cannot estimate this, or like when the sum is going to the infinity, we we'll say that this series is divergent. So if we're given a series, the first thing which we need to do in order to test the convergence is to test this for the divergence. Um, so if we're given a series in this form, we need to check the limit of its general term. So if the limit of its general term is not equal to the zero, then the series is divergent. So when this is equal to the zero, so this test doesn't work, right? So maybe the series is convergent or divergent. We need to use the other test in order to test the series for the convergence. So let's start with the first one. So this type of the series are called a P series. This is coming in general in this form. For example, if the P is equal to the one, we can write down this P series in the form of one over n which can be expanded as 1 plus 1 over t plus 1 over 3 plus n so on. And this is the spatial series, which is going to be called as a harmonic series. So for this type of the series, when p is more than 1, the series is convergent. And when p is less or equal to the 1, the series is divergent. So as you might notice that when p is equal to the 1, the series is divergent as well. So the example of the P series, which is convergent, might be when we sum 1 over n squared, right? Where the P is equal to the T, which is bigger than 1. So which can be expanded as 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus n and so on. So this series is convergent. So please note that here we're just testing the series on the convergency and the divergency. We're not estimating the sum yet. So if the series is not in the form of the P-series, but it is in this form, then this kind of series is called the geometric series, which can be expanded by substituting the values of the n to here to the general term in the form. So when we substitute n to be equal to the 1 here, it's going to be simply a, right? And this is going to be called the first term of the geometric series. And when I substitute n to be equal to the 0, it's going to be a r plus a r square plus a r cube and so on. So sometimes we might need some algebraic manipulations in order to bring the series in this form. But once we bring the series to this form, it is clear for us how to test the series for the convergence. So we need to evaluate the r. So we need to find the value of the r, which is called the general quadrant. When the value of the r in the module in its absolute value is less than 1, the series is convergent. And even though we know we, we can estimate its sum. So when the series is written in the form like this, and when the r, the absolute value of the r is less than 1, for example, it means that the value of the r is between, between minus 1 and r, 1, then its sum is equal to the first term divided to the 1 minus the general quadrant. When the r in the model is bigger or equal to the 1, then the series is divergent. So basically when the r is less than minus 1, less or equal to the minus 1, and or when r is more than 1, then the series is divergent. And we can, so then obviously the sum of this kind of series is going to the infinity. So if our series is not the P series or not the geometric series, we need to use one of the comparison tests. So if the series is coming in, in the form of the rational form or when it comes in the algebraic form, which involves the powers of the n, then we need to use 
the comparison test. Basically, we need to compare our series with the P series. Basically, it works in this form. So, for example, let's say we're given a series in the form of n cube plus 1 divided to 3n cube plus 4n square plus 2. This is our series. n goes from 1 to infinity. So we are going to denote its general term as an. So I would like to figure out another series, bn, so that this is going to be similar to this in terms of the powers of the n, right? So I see from here that the power of the n in the numerator is n in the power of 3 over t, right? The highest power. And the highest power on the denominator is n cubed, right? This is going to be my series, so, or which can be written as 1 over n and the power of 3 over t. So, what, so I know that they are similar because if I find a limit of a n divided to the b n, this is going to be constant. So let's check this. So if you do this, this is going to be n cubed plus 1 from the square root divided to the 3 n cubed plus 4 n square plus t multiplied to the reciprocal of the b, it's going to be n cubed divided to the n in the power of 3 over t. When I estimate its limit when n goes to the infinity, this is going to be equal to the 1 over 3. So that is why we call this t-series a similar series, where the convergence rate are more or less equal. So when this limit of the ratio between these two series is equal to the constant, it means that both of the series are either convergence series, either divergence series at the same time. What does it mean? It means that if Bn is convergent, then An is also convergent. If Bn is divergent, then An is also convergent. From here, I see that this is the P-series, where the P is equal to the 3 over T, which is more than 1, right? It means that this series is convergent. So that is why our initial series was the An is also convergent. So if the series is coming in this form, where the signs of the series are changing, are alternating from minus to the plus, this kind of series are called as alternating series. So in general, we're writing down the alternating series in this form, minus 1 in the power of n plus 1 multiplied to the bn, where all the terms bn except the sign are themselves are positive. So in order to check this kind of series for the convergence, we need to check the two conditions. So the terms, the bn, should be non-increasing, they should be either decreased, either should be in the same level. And the second condition is the limit of Bn when n goes to the infinity should be equal to the zero. So these two conditions, if the series fulfills these two conditions, then the series is convergent. For example, so 1 over n was the harmonic series, Right? And this was the di divergent series. If we multiply this as a minus 1 in a pair of n plus 1, right? When n goes from 1 to the infinity, we can write this in the form as 1 minus 1 over t plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and so on. This is going to be called as alternating harmonic series. And we need to check the two conditions, right? The first condition is when 1 over n plus 1 is, should be sorry, here should be smaller than bn, should be either smaller or equal to the 1 over n. So we know that for all the values of the n bigger than 1, this is true, right? And the second condition should be our bn, or the limit of our bn, should be equal to the 0. This is also true. So it means that the alternating harmonic series is convergent. So if our series is not the alternating series, but it contains the factorials or other terms involving the powers of the n, we need to use the ratio test. So in order to test the series using the ratio test, we need to write down the general term of the series, uh, an. Then we need to find the an plus 1. Then we need to find the limit of the ratio of an plus 1 to the an in the module. And this limit should go to the infinity. So w w when we find this limit when n goes to the infinity, and if this is exist, if this ex exists, and if this is some constant which is less than one, then the series is convergent.
So when this limit of the ratio of an plus 1 to the an is some constant, but this is more than 1, where it doesn't exist, then the series is divergent. When this limit, when an goes to the infinity of the an plus 1 divided to the an is equal to the 1, the test is inconclusive. It means that we need to use another test to test the series for the convergence because this test doesn't work. So this test cannot tell us whether the series is convergent or divergent. When this ratio uh, is equal to the 1, when we take the limit on n goes to the infinity. So if the series is in the form of bn in the power of n, then we need to use the ratio test. So the ratio test tells me that we need to take the limit of bn, right? So or an, let's say, is in the form like this. So we need to find the an. We need to take the root of the n's degree. When n goes to the infinity, if this is some constant which is less than 1, then the series is convergent. When we find at this limit, when a n doesn't exist or exist and this is equal to the L, is more than 1, right? Either this is infinity, either it, it, is, it doesn't exist, either this is more than 1, then the series is divergent. And again, when the limit of a n in the power of 1 over n, n goes to the infinity is equal to the 1, then the series is again is inconclusive. It means that the series, this test doesn't tell us whether the series is convergent or divergent. So let's do a couple of problems, so solve the couple of problems, and you need to try to solve them by yourself by putting this video to the pause and see the solutions afterwards. Uh, one more test is about the integral test. If the series is in the form of a n is equal to the f of n, and you know that you can integrate, you can find the antiderivative of the f n, then you need to use the integral test. So this test tells me that I need to integrate of f n with respect to the n from 1 to the infinity. If this integral is finite, or basically there is some number after you integrate this, then the series convergent. When the integration is infinite, then the series is divergent. So what we need to do is now we need to consider a couple of examples. So when you solve the examples, just try to put the video to the pause and try to solve them by yourself, then see the solutions. The first example is when we find the sum from 1 to the infinity of the n minus 1 divided to the tn minus 1. So the general term of the series is equal to the n minus 1 divided to the tn minus 1. So again, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to test the series for the divergence, right? So we need to find the limit of the n. n goes to the infinity. This is going to be the limit of n minus 1 divided to the tn minus 1 n goes to the infinity. So if I multiply the boss numerator and denominator to the reciprocal of the n, this, the ratio doesn't change, right? But what I can get is the limit of n goes to the infinity, 1 minus 1 over n, divided to the t minus 1 over n. So when n goes to the 0, infinity, these two terms are going to the 0, this is going to the 0, and this is going to the 0, and what is left is 1 over t. So this is not equal to the zero. It means that the series is divergent, right? So let's consider another example. When the series is given in the form n multiplied to the e in the power of minus n square, right? So either we need to use the integral test, either we can use the ratio test here, right? So uh, I can write down the function in the form n e in the power of minus n squared. So I see that I can integrate this. There exists the antiderivative of this, right? So that is why I would like to try to integrate this. Uh, here's the integral test. So let's integrate this function with respect to the n from 1 to the infinity. This is going to be the integration of the n e in the power of minus n squared dn from 1 to the infinity. You see, so here I have the function 
and its derivative also here, right? So I need to use <coughs> the substitution rule. So let, it, let me substitute this. Was the here is going to be minus n square, right? And uh, du is going to be equal to minus tn dn. So in this integration, I have the n and dn. So this is this part. So which is equal to minus du over t, right? So that is why I can write down this integration without writing down the borders of the integration because at the end, I would like to resubstitute back my, uh, my old variable. This is going to be equal to e in the power of u multiplied to the minus du over t. If I integrate this, it is going to be minus 1 over t in the power of u. If I resubstitute this back, it is going to be minus 1 over t in the power of minus n squared, right? Then we need to put the 1 and infinity here. So if I substitute the infinity, it's going to be minus 1 over t in the power of minus infinity, right? And if I substitute the 1, it's going to be plus 1 over t in the power of minus 1. So the reciprocal of the infinity, actually this can be written as minus 1 over t e in the power of infinity, which is going to be going to the 0, right? Because this is 1 over infinity. And the second term is equal to 1 over t multiplied to the e in the power of minus 1. So this integration is finite, right? This is the number, so that is why the following series or series is convergent. So let's consider another example so our series let's say is given in the form of n cubed divided to the n4 plus 1 so we know that the series is divergent right because the series is n cubed divided to the n4 plus 1 is very similar to the 1 over n right they are similar because if you find the limit of the ratio this is going to be a constant so since this series is divergent, then this is divergent as well. But now let's consider an example where the series is multiplied to the 1 in the power of n, right? It means that the signs of the terms of the series are going to alternate the negative to the positive. So this is going to be alternative series, and in order to check this, we need to find the limit of n cubed divided to the n4 plus 1 when n goes to the infinity, and this is going to be equal to the 0, Right, because if you multiply the numerator to the 1 over n in the power of 4 and the denominator to the 1 over n in the power of 4, all the terms, then this is going to be equal to the limit of 1 over n divided to 1 plus 1 over n in the power of 4. Sorry. So when n goes to the infinity, this goes to the 0, and this goes to the 0. This is becoming 0 divided to the 1, which is 0. Right? So the limit, so the second condition for the alternating test works. It means that the series is convergent unless this is going to be in decreasing series. And we see from here, right, that the series is decreasing when n goes up or increasing. So let's consider another example. So t k, t in a pair of k divided to the k factorials. So k goes from 1 to the infinity. So this is an example where the series is involved the factorials and some powers of the numbers in the power of k. So we need to try to use the ratio test. So in order to do this, we need to define what is the an. It's going to be 2 in the power of k divided to the k factorials. And an plus 1, this is going to be 2 in the power of k plus 1 divided to the k plus 1 factorials. So in order to test the series for the convergence, what we need to do is we need to find the limit of the ratio of a n plus 1 to the a n when n goes to the infinity. This is going to be equal to the limit n goes to the infinity of t in the power of k multiplied to the t, right? Because t in the power of k plus 1 can be written like this. So k plus 1 factorials can be written as k factorial multiplied to the k plus 1 multiplied to the reciprocal of the a n. It's going to be k factorials divided to the t in the pair of k. So we can cancel out this term and this, this one and this. And what is left is simply t, right? I can take this out from the brackets. The limit of 1 divided to the k plus 1 when k goes to the infinity. So this term is equal to the 0. 
right? So that is why the limit is also equal to the zero. So this limit exists and this is equal to the zero. It means that this is actually less than one. So that is why the series is converging. So now, so let's consider one example on the geometric series as well on how we need to find the sum of the geometric series. So let's say our series is given in the form of 1 over 3 in the power of n. n goes from 0 to the infinity. It's really important from which n you're starting at, right? So let's say we're starting from the 0, then we can write the series in the form 1, so plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 9, plus n, so on. Right? This is the geometric series where every term is multiplied to the r, which is 1 over 3, and the first term is equal to the 1. So when the r is less than 1, right, in the module is between minus 1 and 1, then this series is convergent and its sum is equal to the 1 divided to 1 minus 1 over 3, 1 minus r. This is going to be equal to 3 over 2, right, because here I will have 2 over 3. And if I take as reciprocal, it's going to be 3 over 2. So if you start this from 1, this is going to be 1 over 3 in the power of n. If I substitute it, it's going to be 1 over 3. If you substitute the 2, it's going to be 1 over 9 plus n, so on. This is going to be, again, the geometric series when the first term is equal to the 1 over 3. And the common ratio is 1 over 3. This is the number to which we multiply the previous term in order to get the next one, right? This is going to be equal to the first term, which is 1 over 3, divided to the 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 over 3. This is going to be equal to the 1 over 3 divided to the 2 over 3, and this is equal to the 1 over 2, right? So th there are special type of the series, which are kind of the functions, so which are coming with the powers of the x. So this kind of series are called the power series. So in general, we write down the power series in the form of cn x minus a in the power of n, n goes from 0 to the infinity. We can expand the series by substituting the n to be equal to the 0, 1, 2, and so on. So if I substitute the 0, it's going to be c0 plus c1 x minus a plus c2 x minus a in the square plus n, so on. So we say that this series are centered around this number a. So usually we're given this constant a, and the only thing which we need to do, and usually some constants are given as well. So what we want to do, to do is we would like to test the series for the convergence. So the difference from the previous series is that we're having the variable x here now. So previously our series depended only on n, right? So n goes from 1 to the infinity, and the series converges, either diverges, but here now, there are some variables involved in our series, and now for some values of the x, our series might be convergent, and for some values of this x, our series might be divergent. So, so usually we use the ratio test for the conversion to, to test the convergency of the series. So let's consider an example to how to do this. So we are given a series in a form minus 1 in a power of n, x in a power of n, t n minus 1. So I would like to use the ratio test. It tells me that I need to take the general term of the series. Then I need to find also a n plus 1. So basically substitute the n with the n plus 1. All the appearances of the n with the n plus 1. It's going to be minus 1 in a power of n plus 1 multiplied to the x in the power of n plus 1, divided to the t, multiplied to the n plus 1, minus 1. So now what I need to do is I need to check the limit of a n plus 1 divided to the a n when n goes to the infinity, and this is going to be the limit of n goes to the infinity, a n, so I can, so since I'm taking the module, I can get rid of this minus 1s, and I can simply write this as x in the power of n plus 1 divided to the t n plus. So if I open up the brackets, it's going to be actually t n plus 1, right? And multiply t 1 over a n, the reciprocal of the a n, where I can write this by sweeping the places, 
uh, the of the numerator and the denominator, it's going to be tn minus 1 divided to the xn. So actually, I can divide xn plus 1 to the xn, and what is left is simply x, right? So let me take out this from the limits because it doesn't depend on n, the variable of the limit. So the limit of n goes to infinity. It's going to be tn minus 1 divided to the tn plus 1 in the model. So this limit is going to the 1. So basically, we'll have the model of the x, and this is the ratio test. And do you remember? So for the ratio test, if this number uh, is less than 1, then the series is converging. So for all the values of the x between minus 1 and 1, the series is convergent. So we call this interval as the interval of convergence. And when we write down the series in the form of, like this, x in the model is less than 1, we call this number 1 as the radius of convergence. So the only thing which we need to be careful with is that, so this series tells me that the series, uh, th this test tells me that the series is convergent when the limit is less than 1, but it doesn't tell me anything about the series when x is in the model is equal to so on. So we need to check this spatial cases separately. So we, for, for this example, we need to check so x is equal to the 1 or x is equal to the minus 1, right? This is the two cases when the model is going to be equal to the 1. So our series was equal to minus 1 in a pair of n, x in a pair of n divided to the tn minus 1, right? If I substitute n to be equal to the 1, this is going to be equal to the minus 1 in a pair of n, 1 over tn minus 1, right? This is going to be alternating harmonic series which is convergent. So when I substituted here x was the minus 1, this is going to be the series minus 1 in a pair of n multiplied to the minus 1 in a pair of n divided to the tn minus 1, right? So if I have the number with the degrees, I can just add the degrees, right? This is going to be the summation of minus 1 in a pair of tn n divided to the tn minus 1. So no matter what is the n, minus 1 in the pair of tn is going to be always 1, right? Because it is going to have always the even powers. So this is going to be the summation of 1 divided to the tn minus 1, which is similar to a harmonic series, right? Which is divergent. So that is why this series is divergent. So that is why the interval of convergence for this power series is minus 1 include, included the minus 1 in until 1. So for all the values of the x between minus 1, where minus 1 is included, until 1, the series is convergent. And for all of the other values outside this interval, the series is divergent. So the one of the most important like turn to topics of the power series is called the Taylor series. where we're interested to expand the functions on the power series. So in the previous, we can expand the any function, any continuous function, and the power series using the formula, and goes from 0 to the infinity, f n of a divided to the n factorials, multiplied to the x minus a, where f n means the n's derivative of this function, right? So we can expand this in the form so if n is equal to the 0, 0 is the derivative of the function is itself, right? So in the power of n, sorry. So f of a, so plus when n is equal to the 1, it's going to be the first derivative of the function at this point, multiplied to the x minus a. When n is equal to the t, it's going to be the second derivative of the function at the point a divided to the t factorials, multiplied to the x minus a and the square plus the third derivative of the function at the point a divided to the 3 factorials, x minus a and a cube, and so on. So let's consider an example. So what we want is we would like to expand the function in terms of the Taylor series around the center a, which is equal to the 0. Okay. So I would like to write down all the terms, or let's say all the three terms, for this function. 
So first of all, what I need to, need to do is I need to evaluate f of a, right? So a is equal to the zero. f of x is equal to the ln of one plus x, where x is equal to the zero, we can find f of a or f of zero, which is going to be ln of one, which is zero. So f prime of x, it's going to be one over one plus x, well, let me write this as one plus x and a power of minus one. So we need to evaluate this when x is equal to the zero, this is going to be equal to one. So f2 prime of x, it's going to be equal to the derivative of this one, which is going to be minus one multiplied to the one plus x and a power of minus t. If I evaluate this when x is equal to the zero, this is going to be minus one. So f3 prime of the x, it's going to be minus t comes down, and when we multiply this with the minus one, it's going to be t, one plus x and a pair of minus three. When we evaluate this, when x is equal to the zero, it's going to be simply t. So if I substitute everything, all the coefficient, this is going to be equal to the first term is zero, then one multiplied to the x simply, right? Because a is equal to the zero minus 1 over t multiplied to the x in the square. Then if I substitute the t, it's going to be plus t divided to the 6, which is the 3 factorials multiplied to the x cubed, and so on. 